Well, good morning and welcome to the Internet Business Blueprint Podcast. This is James Holmes, your host, and I want to welcome you to what is going to be the concluding uh, edition of uh, our series of lessons on the 11 Forgotten Laws based on the work of Raymond Hollywell. And uh, today what I want to do is really go back through and just kind of summarize the 10 laws that we've, we've been studying here together for the last couple of weeks. And then at the end, um, we're going to kind of cap this thing off with the final uh, law, which is the law of success, which encapsulates everything that we've been talking about up to this point. And then I also want to um, remind you that, you know, the way that I began uh, and what inspired me, I guess, to share this course of study is that I've been going through this training myself. And I've been doing that utilizing the uh, work of Bob Proctor and Mary Morrissey uh, in a work entitled The Eleven Forgotten Laws based on Hollywell's work. And in going through that and, and knowing that for myself, you know, uh, really making just some what I feel like are some significant, um, you know, steps forward in my own journey, uh, I thought, you know, this would be a great thing to share with all of you. Now, it's been a long trek. This, has been a, this is the 11th in a series. And um, it certainly feels like we've come to the conclusion or we'll be coming to the conclusion of what has been, I think, a very um, hopefully meaningful series of lessons for you. And, you know, the, the application to business, you know, this is the Internet Business Blueprint. And this is obviously a program that's geared towards helping you develop a, a thriving online business. But the bottom line is, is that if it isn't happening um, in your mindset, it's not going to happen in terms of the outcome that you uh, experience in your business itself. So this is just really vital foundational information. And I hope that it's, uh, again, had the effect that has been my intention, which is for you to just understand, you know, kind of some of the, the deeper meaning of the things that go on in day-to-day -day life. And as you look at your results, you understand, you know, what are the contributing uh, mindset uh, attitudes and thoughts that, are, are leading to those results. So let me just say to you that if you're interested in receiving the course itself, and I would recommend it, I've got a special uh, arrangement that I want to make you aware of. If you go to my blog at www.askjamesholmes.com and you look at any of the blog posts over the last you know week and a half, there are summaries of this series of lessons. Uh, the video that is uh, simulcast with these podcast lessons is posted on that blog, uh, one for each day for each lesson. At the end of each of those posts, you'll see a little summary statement and it says on there to obtain a copy of the 11 Forgotten Laws course. Um, it gives you a place for you to, um, to click for the 11 Forgotten Laws special. And if you'll do that, what you'll be able to do then is get a 60 five percent discount off of the price of the full course and it's available for you by instant download so what you'll be able to do is literally just download the course um, right from your computer either in, into your computer for replay or into your mp3 player and so it's something that i would definitely recommend that you uh, consider doing um, it certainly is at a great price and what it'll do is go far more deeply into each of these uh, laws than I can do in a 30 minute podcast. And I can do a certain job, I guess, in summarizing and then sharing some practical applications to your business, you know, in, the, in this setting. But in terms of really getting the depth of information, uh, I recommend you going through the course uh, as well. There are some special bonuses tied to that uh, course as well. There's an entire um, separate prosperity course that um, is put in as a bonus. There's also going to be the PDF download of the book itself, uh, Raymond Hollywell's book, Working with the Law. And then uh, finally, you'll find um, the uh, transcripts of the actual audio course itself so you can follow along. And then there's summaries after each chapter, which is one, one law per chapter. There's some summary questions for you that'll help you with your own life application of the lessons that you learn. So I'd recommend you do it. At least go over and take a look at it. You know, just click on the link that says uh, the 11 spiritual or the, the 11 forgotten laws uh, special. And uh, that is on my blog at www.askjamesholmes.com. And um, you can get that there. So let's go and get going with today's uh, training. 
And let's first talk about just a quick little recap of each of the lessons that have already been covered. Um, we started out with the law of thinking. And the, the basic idea behind that is just the awareness that thoughts become things. You know, whatever it is you're thinking about is, is what you will ultimately bring about. And that the understanding of this law and its application is that you have the ability to um, imagine and hold in your mind a dynamic picture of what it is you want to bring about in all aspects of your life and that you have the, the power uh, through the application of these laws to manifest these things in your life, bring them into reality. Um, another thought on that is that if you look at your current results, you know, the things that you are currently experiencing in your business and in your life, and really, you know, be honest and think back to your thought process or your expectations. Let's put it that way. What have you been expecting? And what is it you've been thinking about and focusing on? And the reality is what you see today showing up in your life is a direct uh, result of those thoughts. And so there's a, there's a very powerful lesson that runs through the thread uh, of understanding uh, the law of thinking. So that's number one. Number two is the law of supply. The basic principle here is that there is a, a, a limitless, uh, in existence, a limitless supply of everything that you need to accomplish whatever it is you're setting about to accomplish. In other words, you know, the, the materials, the individuals, the um, resources, uh, the, the money, whatever it is that you're needing to accomplish your goals and your objectives for your business and in your life, those things already exist. What your job is, is to really put yourself in a place of attracting into, into yourself, uh, drawing to yourself those resources. But the fact is they exist. If you're in the process of recruiting towards a, your business, let's say you're, you're in a network marketing business and you're running to recruit uh, new members, every member that you need is already born. They exist here on this planet. So it's a matter of you being able to connect and attract those individuals. The, it's not a supply problem. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, connection problem that you may be facing if you're struggling in your recruiting efforts. If, it, if it's an internet-based business where you're doing direct sales or information product marketing or affiliate marketing, the customers you need for your products and services that you're marketing are out there. They exist. The money to buy those services and products from you has already been minted. It's already there. And so it's not a supply problem. It is an attraction issue. And so that is the underlying lesson of the law of supply, that your job is not to worry about there being enough. There is an abundant amount. It's really about you attracting what you're, you're looking for to you and making that connection. The third law is the law of attraction itself. And the big question with the law of attraction is just coming to an understanding of what it is that you really want. What is it that you really um, that you really want, not just at a, at a wouldn't it be nice to have or wouldn't it be nice to be kind of level, but what is it that from an emotional standpoint that is the firm anchor that you could you know, attach yourself to and really be drawing in the things that you want? What is it that you're looking for? What is it that you want to create? And there are three basic steps to, to uh, engaging with the law of attraction. We talked about that in more detail, in greater detail, in the lesson itself. But the bottom line is, is that you want to look at holding a, an image, a clear image, vividly in your mind about what it is you want, and then asking for that. And the process of asking is carried out through uh, contemplative thought. So prayer, meditation, and really being clear about what it is you're asking for. And then ultimately having the expectation that you're going to receive it. And it does no good to ask for a certain thing if you don't expect to receive it. So the whole idea is bringing yourself to a place and disciplining your mind that as you go about pursuing your objectives, that you expect it to happen, that your expectation is not to fall short, but to actually ex to receive what it is you're seeking to receive and create in your life. The fourth law is the law of receiving. And we talked about the manner in which you uh, interact and engage with the law of receiving is by first giving. That you're, at, you're first giving before you can receive. So you're giving of your time, giving of your talent, giving of your financial resources. And I shared a story with you back in the lesson where, in my own experience with tithing as an example of giving, that I was tithing at a point where I was at 
a point of lack in terms of finances and just the remarkable things that unfolded that I believe were initiated by my tithing that ended up in having me being uh, showered with uh, with abundance with business you know business that was working and revenue that was coming in and obligations that were being met uh, that was really a reward for the discipline I had to tithe when I didn't think I had the means to do so. The fifth lesson is the law of increase. And the idea here is that the law of increase is activated by praise. Now I shared with you that my personal mission statement is simply stated to sow increase in the lives of others by co-creating wealth and abundance. And that sowing of increase really speaks to the idea of giving. So again, giving of talent, giving of time, giving of resources to help another, in my case, create wealth and abundance. For you, whatever that means for you, the idea of sowing increase or creating increase or abiding by the law of increase is simply the thought that you're giving of yourself. You're giving of your time, resources, and talents to benefit others. And that good that you sow is going to come back to you. You're going to reap that, that abundance based on those seeds that you're sowing of increase into other people and other situations, by the way. Uh, the sixth law is the law of compensation. And we've talked in lessons that don't have anything to do with this series and certainly have talked about it in this lesson of this series of the law of compensation that, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you're compensated in two ways, and so it is with life. You're compensated by the problems you solve and in proportion to the value you give to others. And so for someone to engage in your business, to see what you have in terms of the value you represent and be willing to pay you in your business for a product or service, it's directly tied to their perception of the value of what it is that you're providing to them or the problem that what you have to offer is going to solve for them. And so that's the underlying principle of the law of compensation. The seventh law is the law of non-resistance. And I love this law because what it really deals with is the way you go about um, interacting with the world around you in your day-to-day -day activities. So if you're always um, of a posture where you're looking, or let's say even you're expecting conflict, you're looking for the next battle to fight, you're preparing yourself to be strong for the next fight or the next conflict. You're really working with resistance. You're, you're going about your day with resistance. And what the law of, of non-resistance really talks about is almost having what I like to call uh, the mind like water. If you think about um, a tributary stream that flows towards a river, and that river ultimately uh, flowing into the ocean, the purpose of that stream, that water flowing, may be drawing itself onto the ocean. But I'll tell you along its journey, whether it's when it's a stream, <laughs> you know, a, a, a fallen tree, uh, a beaver dam, you know, whatever it is that, that is standing in the way of that water flowing towards the river, the water is not fighting against those things. It's actually working its way, looking for the path of least resistance to continue flowing towards its ultimate purpose because the big picture, the big idea is the river, not that, you know, the, the fallen uh, tree or whatever it is in the path of the stream. And when that water reaches and contributes to the raging river, you know, it comes across, you know, boulders and larger obstacles along its way. Again, it's not fighting against those things. It's flowing up and around those things, those obstacles because it has its you know, purpose set on continuing to flow towards that ocean. And much as it can be for us in our lives that, you know, I'm not saying that you should be a doormat, that you should be you know, an easy mark for people that would maybe set out to put you know, legitimate conflict in your path. But what I am saying is that you don't need to have the mindset where you're out there expecting the worst and being you know, set for battle that if you really adopt a mindset that allows you to really be able to recognize in a very measured way what are the battles worth truly fighting and what are really minor conflicts or obstacles that you can actually use as stepping stones to move on to your ultimate goal, your ultimate uh, big picture journey. And that's, and that's where your mind should be set, is on, the, on what you're ultimately looking to accomplish. And so my thought in sharing the whole idea 
of the uh, law of non-resistance is that you want to let your life flow. And you want to once again put out good because good will flow back to you. And the interesting thing about putting out good is that good comes back to you over time. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer for those uh, results to be manifest into your life. But I think you'd agree with me that when you put out the uh, bad energy, uh, that the conflict really has a pretty immediate return. You know, and, and that's really true. Uh, if you think of any idea of, of a conflicting situation, you think about complimenting someone or praising somebody, you know, you're building up goodwill and the good from that will come back to you over time. If you're, if you're putting out uh, negativity, um, you probably would also recognize that that would probably come back to you pretty quickly and, and in not a good way. So the idea of the law of non-resistance is really to go about your day, um, you know, seeking again to sow good seeds, but looking to be in this place of non-resistance and not only in the way you go about um, engaging in the world, but as you let things flow back to you, and it goes back to this idea of expectation once again, that you're expecting good. So when it comes to you, accept it, you know, accept it without resistance. And that's equally as important in understanding the principles underneath that law. Law number eight is the law of forgiveness. And here's the important lesson with forgiveness. And I would assume that we all can look at experiences in our own lives where we've had maybe conflicts where we feel like someone has maybe, you know, um, done something wrong to us. And that what you'll find is if you harbor feelings of unforgiveness, that really you hurt yourself more, you restrict your, your opportunities more than it ever would affect the other person. And oftentimes in situations like this, you may be walking around with these feelings of unforgiveness, these hurt feelings, these bitter feelings towards another individual. And that's occupying a part of your day or, or at times when you think about that individual. And their reality on the other side of it is they're probably completely unaffected. Um, half the time people, you know, are walking around somewhat unconscious, not even understanding the hurt they may cause to other people. So it isn't out of malice, it's just out of carelessness. And so when you're sitting there harboring these feelings of unforgiveness and restricting your own abundance, they're going about their day um, totally unaffected by it. And so it's actually you that ends up paying the price. So the principle of the law of forgiveness simply um, stated is that you need to learn to let go and you need to learn to forgive and you need to learn to move on. Now, if there are people that are constantly a source of, you know, frustration or uh, conflict for you, then the idea there is just to get them out of your lives. You know, that's that's pretty easy. It's a matter of moving those people on and out. <laughs> but in terms of allowing yourself to get caught up in these feelings of unforgiveness, uh, that then limit your potential, your opportunities, um, you know, that doesn't serve you. And so let that go. The ninth law is the law of sacrifice. And the measured result of this is it deals with the discipline and habits you have. And so there's always a price, you know, no matter what it is that we want. And when I say a price, that's not a negative connotation. Sometimes it's just a matter of the exchange. So, you know, if you choose to do something on a given day, you know, the, the cost of that or the price you pay is the other options that you had. And gr both may be great options. It's also true, though, that sometimes the sacrifice comes in the form of you really exercising discipline, maybe even to do some things that you don't want to do, you're not comfortable doing, you don't feel like are your um, you know, best talents, or that you need to sacrifice the time and effort and energy it takes to learn new skills, to create the ability for you to be able to accomplish what it is you're seeking out to accomplish. So the law of sacrifice really talks about your discipline, really talks about your habits. And for you to be able to, you know, take the time necessary to develop the habits that are going to lead to the success that you're, that you're seeking. So that's the law of sacrifice. The tenth law is the law of obedience, and it's acting within the harmony with your own nature. You know, our nature as, you know, singular creatures that are endowed with the God-given gift of creative thought is for us to be um, in harmony with these laws. And what obedience st should stem from is a respect of the law. 
not not fear of punishment, but but actually having a healthy respect for the law and the creator of the law. And if you think back to your childhood, the question I would ask is when you, you know, chose to be obedient, was it out of the respect you had for your parents or was it out of fear of your parents? And there may have been moments <laughs> give you where it may have been fear or there's something you really wanted to do, but you feared the punishment if it was something you were doing that was going to be wrong. But I would be willing to bet that for most people, the, uh, the willingness to be obedient really stemmed out of respect for the, the laws set forth by your parents. And it's the same thing here. It's, it's not that, uh, at least I hope you don't fear your God, that you fear that, you know, if you're not obedient, uh, that somehow you're going to be punished, that more that it's a, a factor that, um, you know, you have a, a love and an appreciation and a respect for your God, and you're going to be obedient to your God uh, because of that respect and love. And, and that's the idea, the underlying message um, behind the law of obedience. So those are the 10 laws that we have covered so far. And in this, in that this is the final lesson, I wanted to go back and really kind of just summarize that. And if you, um, you know, have the time to do it and would invest the time to do it, I would at minimum go back and listen to the prior 10 recordings of this uh, series. And what I might recommend you do, I said at a minimum, at the most, what I would do is actually buy the course, because again, the depth of the um, instruction by Bob Proctor and Mary Morrissey, who were truly gifted instructors in this area, is far beyond what I can do in summary. But I think you'll get the sense and the essence of what it is that is being taught uh, by the lessons we've shared together these last two weeks. So let's talk about today, uh, which is the law of success. And, and this is what the, the underlying idea that I want you to really hold on to. And it's one that I have no doubt about. And it's this, that God created us, created you, created me in his own image. And in that image, I believe God created us to be abundant and prosperous. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. I have a hard time accepting the idea that God would create us in his image, that God would give us this um, incarnation of the ability, the power, the awesome power and ability to have creative thought. And that he would do that for us to be living in lack, in scarcity, poverty, in struggle. I just don't, I don't think those things are congruent in, in terms of those two ideas. So because that is my belief, I believe that if you're in harmony with these laws, that you're actually working and living within the will of God, and that as a result of that, what should actually happen, it logically happen, will happen. There's a perfect order to the universe. And so if you follow these laws, and over time, you're perfecting yourself in these laws, that your faith is strong enough to allow you to believe that you are worthy of your creation. You know, the universe functions in perfect order, and as we've already talked about, there's a limitless supply. So it seems that the only thing that's creating the gap is our belief and acceptance of these facts. And at the end of the day, that your possibilities are limitless. So true self-help, exploring oneself, you know, knowledge of yourself, and applying the laws combined with your unique talents will cause you to advance in your purpose. And I believe that, you know, why are we here? It's to live out our purpose. And I, and I believe that. So I want to ask you a couple of questions. And I think the answer to these questions will help you to understand where you're at today in your mindset and where it is that you may want to look to go um, as you move forward. So my first question is, do you have the desire to succeed? And whatever that definition of success is for you, whatever that looks like when you close your eyes and imagine your success, do you have a desire to achieve that? And is that desire to achieve it one that involves action? Because also what I find, and I would probably say there have been even periods of time in my life where I've been, um, you know, probably guilty of this, which is you kind of just run on autopilot, meaning you may have some basic dreams out there, some goals that are kind of, you know, weak in commitment, but you have at least some ideas in mind. But in reality, you go by your day-to-day -day life, you know, waking up and going to bed and whatever happens in between being largely um, a random series of events. In other words, not very much of it 
um, on purpose, you know, where you've actually directed and thought through and acted on your decisions based on the idea of focusing on that end goal. And so what you're really doing is just allowing life to happen in kind of a random way. It, so it unfolds in a random way for you. And you feel like you have no control. And you feel that you know maybe it's luck uh, that controls your, your, your results. Um, and then what that leads to ultimately, I think, is sometimes for a lot of people could be a lot of regret because you haven't made decisions. And so I think it's always important to decide, even if you were to say, you know what, I think this is just a bunch of malarkey <laughs> and I don't believe in any of it. And I think, you know, life is just random and, you know, luck and circumstances and coincidence is what rules uh, your reality. And you just want to decide that you want to set all this aside and it has no application to you. Then I feel sorry for that decision, but at least it's a decision. I'd rather have you go through that thought process and, and the uh, process of really challenging your own beliefs, even if you conclude with what I think would be a wrong answer, then that you just would go about life day to day, letting life happen to you and being unconscious as you go through the process. Ultimately, of course, I would hope that you see the truth in what we've been talking about the last two weeks and that you would make decisions to step into your power, step into your inherited uh, birthright, which is to live a prosperous, abundant life, to, to, to utilize the powers of creative thought, to utilize the God-given talents that are unique to you, and to use all those things formed together to draw in to yourself the resources, the people, the opportunities needed to create the life you want. And that'd be the decision that I would hope you'd make on the other side of that. So my advice, if you fall in line with the kind of ladder of my description, is to really study these laws. You know, really invest the time and the energy and the, the contemplative thought to really get to understand these laws and understand how to apply them to your own life. And then to expect the results, because you can do that to the point where you actually earn the right, and I do mean earn, the right for these laws to be working for you. Again, the universe works in perfect order. So it's like a, a formula or a recipe. And if you follow it, you're going to have a, a predictable outcome. My second question for you is, what is your vision for your life? So assuming you cannot fail, what does that look like? And is that vision really, really clear? You know, if you close your eyes, could you really envision what that looks like? And one simple exercise that I want to encourage you to do is write those objectives or those goals. I, I like the word objective because I think it's a little stronger, but that your goals or objectives, write them down on paper, put them on a little index card and carry it with you and get in the habit of looking at that card often. We've talked in the past about the idea of, you know, creating a vision board. I actually shared with you a couple of lessons ago, an example of, of a vision board of mine that was created at a very important key turning point in my life. And I'd encourage you to use these as tools. They're not magic. All they are are just mental triggers to help you stay focused on your objective. So in closing this lesson, I want to share with you a poem that Raymond Hollywell uses to close out um, his lesson on working with the law. And then we'll be done with this series. And it goes like this. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you are done, I'm sorry, let me start over again. And you know, sometimes my thoughts get ahead of my words. So let me start over again. I really want you to get the value of this. If you, are, if you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but think you can't, it's almost the sense you won't. If you think you will lose, you're lost. For out in the world we find, success begins with a person's will it's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or the faster one, but sooner or later, the person who wins is the one who thinks they can. I want to thank you for uh, being a part of these 11 lessons. I hope they've been, again, as I said before, impactful to your life. 
I look forward to us getting back to uh, our broadcast again tomorrow to uh, begin talking about some key concepts and principles to help you grow your business. Thank you for being with me, and I hope you have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow.